Woo! That's how they work. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your very own Strike Anywhere matches. Stay tuned. So I wanna make sure and give credit where credit is due. I learned this incredible hack from Zachary Fowler of Fowler's Makery and Mischief. It's a fantastic YouTube channel, and I'll make sure and put a link down below. Of course, he won season three of Alone, and it's just a great outdoorsman and an all-around wonderful Christian guy. He made this video about six years ago, and because I've been using Strike Anywhere matches on my channel, in my Hobo series, I've been getting people asking me, where do you buy those? Well, they're really hard to find, and the ones you do find are not as good a quality as they used to be. So here's a way you can make your own. However, do be very careful. They really pop off. And be careful how much of the phosphorus you put on the end of the match because, again, they really do flare up. But they're great survival matches. It's a wonderful survival hack, and I hope you enjoy making it. As many of you know, Strike Anywhere matches are getting increasingly difficult to find. A few years ago, I purchased 20 boxes of these. These are the small Uko brand Strike Anywhere matches, and these are fantastic. Unfortunately, you can't purchase these anywhere anymore. They don't make them. The only Strike Anywhere matches you can still buy are these made by Diamond, and they work pretty good. Now, none of these matches are quite as good as what we used to be able to get. The old Ohio uh, blue tip matches were amazing, but these work okay. And if you can find any of these, uh, again, you can still purchase these in some places. And uh, I'll try to put a link down below to where you can find them. For those of you who do not know what a Strike Anywhere match is, it is a match that does not require the striker on the side of the box. This particular substance is a red phosphorus. And you can scrape this off and use it for the project we're talking about. However, there's not a lot on here and it's probably not worth it. But what they've done is they've combined both substances into the head of the match. That's why you can actually see the two different colors. When you strike that, it combines them, which causes an instant flame. You've often seen me do this on different videos. And there we go. They don't always work the first time, but they do work pretty well. To make this project, you're going to need a few simple items. First of all, we just have a box of strike on box matches. Got these at Walmart. You may want a wooden toothpick. We have a small mortar and pestle here. We have a couple packages of these caps and I got these at the Dollar Tree, but you can find them sometimes at Walmart. You can order them online, of course, and I'll try to remember and put a link down below where you can order these. You're going to need some kind of a glue. This is a Tight Bond 3 Ultimate. This is a waterproof glue. Going to want some duct tape. I'm going to use my multi-tool, but any type of needle nose pliers will work. And then you're going to need a sheet of paper and a good surface to work on. These particular caps come with a small protective blue part on there. You want to take that off so you expose the actual cap. Now there is a little bit of a paper wadding in here and you can take your multi-tool pliers and you can squeeze this a little bit and tap that and you'll get a little bit of that red phosphorus out. Now what you want to do, the reason you use the toothpick is because you can get down in here and you can very gently go around in a circle and clean out that cap and it makes a nice little pile of the red phosphorus. And that's what we're looking for. And we're gonna do that to all of this, and then I'll get back with you. I do want to caution you while you're doing this. Remember that this is very flammable. And so if you grind in here too hard, you can actually make it go off, make it pop. And if you do that, then all of this will flare up and you'll lose it and you have to start over. So just be very, very careful when you do this and take your time. After you get one emptied, go ahead and take your time and separate out all of the little paper wadding. Because we do not want that. When you get one done and separated from the wadding, you'll want to take and pour it very carefully into your 
mortar and then set this aside. You do not want this to catch fire. Again, the idea is to do one ring at a time and pour it in here. If you're not careful, you can set them all off. But when you're done, you should end up with a decent little pile. Now be very, very careful with this, as I said, because this is something you don't want to mess with. What we're going to do next is we're going to take a dropper and we're going to add enough water to this to get it nice and wet. We want to make a bit of a slurry. Use a bit of this match here, just kind of roll it around. You don't want a huge amount of water. But again, we want to make enough so that it has a paste consistency to it. Now that we have it to that consistency and it's wet, we can take the pestle and we can safely grind it, all those chunks, down into a nice fine powder. And we don't have to worry about it going off on it. If you don't wet it before you do this, it'll go off on you for sure. All right, there you can see we have a nice, even, smooth red powder. Next, we're going to put a little dollop of glue in here for a binding agent. Again, we don't want a whole lot. Just a little bit, about that much. And then we're going to stir that in. After getting the glue stirred in really good, it's going to be quite liquid. You don't want it too syrupy or runny, but thick enough where it will stay on the match. So we're going to take our standard kitchen matches. I'm going to take the head and we're just going to put a nice thick glob on the end. So it looks like that. Once we do that, we're going to take a strip of duct tape and we're going to lay them out on there. Now we're putting the strip of duct tape on a board so that the end of the head can hang off this way. Take the match and put it just like this. I'm going to go ahead and make some more. Just roll it in there to get a nice large glob. And we'll just line these up together and let them dry. So here's the result. We have a total of 25 on each piece of duct tape. So we have 50 Strike Anywhere matches and it took about four of the 12 packs to make this much. Got just a little bit left over, but not enough to make any more matches. So this is working pretty well. Now we're gonna let this dry. Now that they're dried, we're going to take one off here. And we've got a little bit of a tea light going here, a little tea light candle. And we're just going to very gently coat this with some wax. This will help waterproof it and will help preserve it against any dampness. Now you could put this on a string and dip the whole thing. Uh, there's various ways you can use to waterproof matches, but this works pretty good. All right, we finished the last one. I'm going to put them there, and again, want to make sure the wax completely dries. All right, let's give it a test. Let's see how they work. Now, again, you got to be careful. These are very powerful, and that's one reason why you want to put wax on them. When you drag them across something, as you can see, they strike very, very easy and burn very strongly. When you go to store them, you want to store them in a metal container, and I wouldn't put all of them in the same container. And again, the wax helps to keep them from jostling against each other. That's one of the reasons why they considered these unsafe and why they're hard to get a hold of anymore. But this is how you can make your own. Obviously, you just take this, this is a little Altoids tin, and you just slide them in here however many you wish. Being careful, of course, to not scrape any of the wax off. Also, in case you're wondering, I can get about 15 matches in something this size. And this is great pocket size to carry around with you. And uh, again, look for these types of tins. I hope you do. A lot of you do save these. But this is perfect for matches, and especially these. Make sure you put a coating on them. You don't want to carry it around without a wax coating or some sort of protection on there. If they rub together, they're going to go off. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure and check out the links in the description box below just under the More button. 
While you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. This is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes at our beautiful facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.